Hi everyone, welcome to our last unit for IC210. This is all going to be about learning a new programming language, um, which is called C++. And you might be surprised, like, oh my gosh, we're learning a new programming language in the last two weeks of class. Well, don't be too worried. The main thing to know is that C++ is really the C language that we've already known and love and are quite used to, um, with a few extra things added on. So that's kind of the joke of the name of C++. And let's look actually from a historical perspective, where did this come from? Why do we have these different languages? Um, so here's something from the Computer History Museum that has some timeline of programming languages. There's a lot of things that aren't here, but uh, there's some early kind of theoretical work, but some of the earliest practical work actually is by uh, the Navy's own Grace Hopper, um, which was from an early standpoint of looking at how to make machine code a little bit more um, convenient or or easy to write and maintain when you're working with multiple people. So here's her with a Univac machine, I think, which is uh, like the first commercial computer. And then was a go in the history of time. Um, you might have heard of COBOL. And there's uh, Grace Hopper again a little bit later in life. Um, I think this is celebrating an anniversary of of COBOL. Uh, COBOL was in the news recently because in New Jersey, when there was an uptick in unemployment claims with the beginning of the pandemic, they realized that their unemployment um, system was all written in COBOL and they needed to improve it. And nobody knew how to use COBOL. So there was like a, a big call for like, hey, does any, are there any good COBOL programmers out there? Please help the state of New Jersey. Um, then skipping ahead a little bit, the into the early 70s is when we had the development of the C language. This was closely associated with the development of the Unix operating system, which you'll learn more about in one of your classes next semester. So here's the two uh, bearded dudes that made the C programming language, or at least the first version of it, uh, Thompson and Ritchie. And that was a big innovation. Um, a lot of the things which may seem like old or stoic about the C language now were like really revolutionary and advanced at the time. And that's one of the reasons why C is still used quite a lot, uh, despite being now, what, almost uh, 50 years old. Then skipping ahead a bit, there were some new ideas in programming that started to come out in the early 80s and a lot of new interest. And one of the results there was the C++ programming language, which we're going to learn about a little bit next. And so here's the um, main guy that sort of developed that. His name is Bjorn Strustrup, uh, awesome name. And it was really designed to be an extension to the C programming language, but to use some newer kind of features of what we understood about programs. Uh, this other page that I found is kind of an infographic that shows the connections between a lot of these different programming languages. So these are some of the most popular programming languages six to 1950s. You can see there's quite a lot of them. There's a lot of um, reasons why, and uh, if you take the programming languages class, that's a, a cl required class for CS majors uh, in your first year, you'll learn about more of these languages and also learn how to design your own language and what would that take. Um, but what you can see is that C and C++ are two of the most popular ones. They're strongly related. And there's, in fact, many languages that are strongly related to C. It's, uh, it was a very influential language. So it had a lot of impacts on Python, but also on Java, um, uh, as well as uh, later things, more th recent things like Swift and certainly C Sharp and, and Objective C, uh, which was used in iPhones for a while. So there's a... Uh, there's a lot of connections between these. One of the things that you'll find is that by knowing C, that's because that's such a heavy influence in so many other languages, it'll make it easier for you to pick up some other languages. But right now we're gonna look a little bit at C++ and see what are the additional features or things that come into there and how can we write effective programs using those new features. So why have a new language? Like, why are there all these programming languages in the first place? Well, one is to take advantage um, of newer hardware. So as computers get faster, we, our compilers can also do more things, and we also want more out of the computer. Um, and so that's one of the things that newer languages can do. Um, they can also adapt to new ways of programming. 
So one of the big innovations in like the late 70s, early 80s was this idea of object-oriented programming. In fact, you'll take a class on object-oriented programming next semester. And one of the big goals of C++ was to allow object-oriented programming in C. And uh, finally, th another reason for a new language is to just make life um, convenient uh, for large groups of or a single programmer. And why is it important to make life convenient? It's because it allows us to get more stuff done. So for example, one of the things we'll see in C++ versus C is that in C, if you name a function, nobody else is ever allowed to use that same function name in, the, in any part of the same program. And so when, you, when you're just writing something by yourself, that's probably fine. But if you're working in a really large team, it can be hard to keep track of that and make sure that you don't end up stepping on each other's toes. And so these are the, some of the things that we'll look at with C++. The main thing to know, though, for now, is that C++ is backwards compatible to C. What does that mean is that any C program, at least from their original design, any C program is a C++ program. That's the, hence the name like C plus more. Um, and so that's a big advantage for us as C programmers that mostly you can take a C program that you wrote with a few syntactical changes that I'll talk about in a second, and now you have a C++ program. But then we'll also look at some uh, new features and the things that we'll mostly focus on are memory allocation, um, function overloading, which is a, a powerful new technique that is available in C++, but not in C, and also um, things from the standard library, uh, like uh, input output streams and the string class. Um, and so we'll talk about what those things are in the coming lectures like to, in the last week of class. Um, and that'll allow us to write C++ programs which look and, and use more of the cool features of C++. But for right now, you can already write a C++ program and I'll show you how. So here's a program that actually was one of your homeworks from a month ago or something on reading in a number as a double, a dollar amount, and then splitting it into dollars and cents. So this is a .c program, it's called sense.c. If I want to make it be a C++ program, first of all, I have to change the name. So I'll change it to sense.cpp. And I should say the name of the first file. And then I'm almost ready to go. The only difference is that I need to change the name of my includes. So in C, we have like secdio.h. Whenever we want to take one of those C standard header files and include them in a C++ program, we just put this, the word C and we don't use that .h. So all the standard headers for C++ don't have any .h. So for um, standard IO, it's this one. Like for string, it would be C string um, instead of string.h. Now you might think, oh, another one that we'll commonly want is like CSTD bool. But no, you don't need to use this. You don't need to include any such header because in fact, the bool type is included for free. Bool type is built in to C++. So we don't need that. And otherwise, our program can stay exactly the same. We still want a main function and we can write our functions like this. We can use pointers. We can use printf and scanf. We'll later see other things to use that are a little bit of a more advanced feature instead of printf and scanf but we can use those things in C++ as well as in C. So now this C++ program will work, but how do I compile it? Well, instead of using GCC, we just use G++. So I'll say G++ sense.cpp, tac o sense, that compiles and it works. Uh, and I forgot to type a dollar sign and now it actually works. Okay, so the main changes is just change your file name to be called .cpp and then change the header files and now you're ready to go. Now you're a C++ programmer. And we'll learn more about some of the other cool features of C++ uh, in the next few days.